Senator Tom Cotton, News Radio 1029 KRN. Good morning to you, sir. How are you doing today? Good morning, Kevin. Good to be on with you. Thank you. Hey, I, you know, I watched your uh, interview with uh, Chris, Chris Wallace there on Fox News, and uh, he asked you directly about your position uh, with the Supreme Court justice compared with what happened with Merrick Garland. How is there a difference from then to now? Well, Kevin, in 2014, the people of Arkansas elected me, and the American people elected a Republican Senate majority to help put the brakes on the final two years of the Obama administration. And in 2016, when there was a vacancy on the Supreme Court, the president exercised his constitutional authority to make a nomination. We exercised ours to give advice and consent, and our advice and consent was we did not consent to that nomination. It's happened many times in our history when the Senate and the White House were in opposite hands that the Senate did not fill a vacancy in the final year of a term. Now here, the American people didn't just elect the president in 2016. They very clearly, in a referendum election in 2018, just one month after the controversy over Brett Kavanaugh, expanded the Republican majority in the Senate specifically to continue to confirm Donald Trump's conservative judges. Four Democratic senators who voted against Brett Kavanaugh a month earlier lost their re-election. The one Democratic senator who voted for Brett Kavanaugh won his re-election. It could not be clearer the mandate that we receive to continue to perform our constitutional responsibility in a manner consistent that we promised on the campaign, which is that we would confirm conservative jurists to the courts. And that's what we have done, and that's what we will do. Uh, talking with Senator Tom Cotton, uh, I hear a lot of beating around the bush about the whole thing, too. I mean, why don't we call it what it is? Conservatives want their pick on the bench, and you got to think that if the uh, shoe was on the other foot, uh, Democrats <laughs> would want the same. Well, of course the Democrats would want the same. And, and look, Kevin, we don't really have to debate about hypothetically what the Democrats would do. They said in, in 2016 that they thought it was a matter of high principle that a Senate controlled by the party of the president's opposition should confirm the president's Supreme Court nominee in an election year. What do they think, or what do you think they would say then if it was controlled by the same party? Of course the Democrats would confirm a Democratic Supreme Court nominee, and I expect the Republican Senate will confirm this president's nominee next month. I have two polls out here, uh, Senator. Uh, Reuters poll uh, that shows the same thing that another poll from Politico basically does, that people would prefer to the tune of 60-plus percent that the winner of the presidential election select the justice's replacement. But that's not what's going to happen here. Yeah, so, so I haven't seen those polls, Kevin. And obviously polling on a question like this is highly sensitive to the way the questions are written. And I'll just say that most most reporters and most pollsters that do things like this are well, I mean, very, very liberal when it comes to the Supreme Court. But this is, this is a case in which... Uh, the old saying, the only poll that matters, the one that happens on Election Day, couldn't be truer. We had a poll just one month after a Supreme Court controversy in 2018. The Democrats campaigned in no small part on electing a Democratic majority to block Donald Trump's uh, judicial nominees. We campaigned to expand our majority, and that's exactly what we did. That's what our voters sent us to Washington to do, and that's what we're going to do next month. It's Kevin Miller. We're talking to Senator Tom Cotton. Uh, Senator... Uh Several cases are going to come up uh, involving the Supreme Court, and some of these could involve President Trump, too. Uh, if it was anywhere else, a justice, justice would be expected to recuse themselves if a case was that closely involved to their interest. Uh, why does the president then get to choose uh, the justice that may be ruling on his situation? Uh, so, so, Kevin, it's never been the case that a justice or even a lower court judge recuses um, because a case involves the administration of the president that appointed them, that, that would obviously bring the court grinding to a halt. You know, you would not have had uh, Justices Sotomayor or Kagan ever ruling on any matter involving Barack Obama and his policies and his administration. So it's never been the case that a federal judge needs to recuse uh, in any matter involving the president or the president's administration because you simply would have the wills of justice grinding to a halt. Senator, why can we move so fast on this in Congress, but yet it seems like we spin our wheels on so many other issues? Help me understand. <laughs> well, in a, way, in a way, Kevin, it's just the, the difference between nominations of any kind, uh, whether to the Supreme Court or lower court of the executive branch versus legislation. In the end, our, our advice and consent role is pretty straightforward. It's yes or no. Um, whereas with legislation, there's always a little more haggling, a little more negotiating to be done. You know, you have a bill that's about energy, well, you know, a group of senators want legislation or want an amendment about, um, you know, say, agriculture or about transportation. And if they have the votes, then they have the votes to move forward. Whereas in the not, when we're sitting um, 
to evaluate a nomination, there really is no give and take. There's no haggling. There's no way to split the difference, so to speak, on a nomination. It's either yes or no. Um, one reason why um, I believe we can move forward without delay and probably have a vote before the election is that most of the people that the president has said he's considering nominating have just gone through this process a year or two or three years ago. Uh, so we've already vetted them. We've already reviewed their record. Going back to elementary school, there is very little marginal work to be done. They've probably written you know, a few dozen opinions in the meantime that we'll all want to read. Um, but there's very little additional work to be done. Um, so I would expect a, a confirmation process that is more in keeping with what Justice Ginsburg herself was about six weeks or Sandra Day O'Connor about five weeks than the kind of long, drawn-out process that we've sometimes had in the past. All right. Hey, Senators, I'm Cotton. Good to have you on. Thanks. So Thank much. you.